A triptych is a work of art, usually a panel painting, that is divided into three sections, or three carved panels, that are hinged together and can be folded, shut or displayed open. A photographic triptych is a common style used in modern commercial artwork. The photographs are usually arranged with a plain border between them. The work may consist of separate images that are variants on a theme, or may be one larger image split into three. When making a triptych, the goal is to create three individual panels that work well together to tell a story, or that as together are visually processed as one. When making a triptych, try to maintain a strong sense of unity and synchronicity across your three images. Maintain a visual coherence by using colour, shape, lines, theme or subject. Once you have your photos, the rest of the video will show you how to use Photoshop to put them together. Right, so what we're going to show you is how to do your triptych using the um, Photoshop. I have Photoshop CC, but I think what I show you, you'll be able to do on most Photoshop versions. So starting off, we need to create a new document. So come up here to File, and then we go New Document, and then you want to set your custom document. So if we were doing a document for our um, competition files, it needs to be 1620 wide, 1080 high, and I usually like my resolution, say 200. Um, I like to work in 16 bit, and we're gonna use a black background because that will give us black borders at the end. You'll get to see this. You can change the background later. You just click on the background layer and you can change the color. That's fine. So we're not gonna color manage at the moment. Oh, we will color manage. We'll go to my working color. And um, I usually work in sRGB because that is what is shown on most computer screens and that is what's shown online. So if you work in sRGB, that should give you a good color representation when you're sending files away to be looked at online or to a competition. So then I click create and there's my document. So now we've got to set out where we're going to put our three photos and to do that we go up to view and we want to put in a new guide layout. So we're going to do a new guide layout. We need three columns, because there's going to be three pictures. Don't worry about the width, it will automatically do it. And if we put clear existing lines, clear exist and center the columns, and we'll put a bit of a border around. So I might just change that border to uh, 50. Make it a bit narrower. So you have to do the same size border all the way around and make sure the gutter, that's this bit here in between the two photos, that is the same size as your margins. And then everything will be quite, I was going to say symmetrical, but given that it's three photos, you can't have it symmetrical as such. So that's it. Now, one little tip you can do is you can save this. So if I go up here where it says custom and I say save preset, bring up this and it's going to save it and in my file for my things and I can name that triptych. Save. And then next time I want to use this, this um, guide layout again, I can because I've already saved it. So I click OK and there's my guide layout. So this is where it changes depending on the version you've got. So I'll do the simple version first and then I'll show you 
a different way of doing it, but it works out exactly the same. So, what I have to do is, um, is get my photo. So I go here and I'm going to use these photos here. You'll get given these in a file, go to Dropbox. So I just put that in there. Right. And then I grab my next picture. Oh. Don't forget to click the tick when you're satisfied. You can remove, you can change the size of that. So if I want to make it more so that it fits in a bit more to where that blue square is, that's fine. Don't worry about the excess. We're going to show you how to get rid of that in a minute. So you click the tick. And then you can either do it one photo at a time or you can just add all three photos. So let's add the second photo. And we can do the same again. We can resize it. And if you notice over here, it's on a different layer, so don't panic. They're all on different layers. Click the tick to say, yep, I've accepted that. Get your third photo, and that's this one here. Drag it onto your photo. Put it into place. And then resize it a bit. So there's your three photos. Click the tick. Okay, so if, let's go back to this one. Let's turn these off. So we go back to the first photo. And if we go up to this rectangular marquee tool, right, we put our cross here. Now, some of you might need to zoom in. But if you put that so that it lines up exactly on those blue intersection and it should automatically click itself into the blue it's going oh you want to go on that blue grid and it will click to the guides um i think that i have done that in preferences put it click to guides so now that you've got that all you have to do is go down here and this is add a layer mask click add a layer mask and it automatically masks it out so there's your photo Turn on the next one and do the same again. So I'm just going to do that and click and add a lay mask. And then we turn on the third one. We do the same thing. Add the lay mask. And done. So next what we want to do is put some borders around these. So we'll close that. And to put the borders around, what I do is I go back up here and I go clear guides. So view, clear guides. And that just gets rid of the guides for us. So to get back so that I know where I'm going to put my, um, my borders, if I click on the first layer, twirl one, and I go up to select, load selection, and it will automatically load up that mask for me. And I go like that, and there's the mask, and I can go edit, stroke, ooh, let's go for white, four pixels, Okay, and there's a nice white border. And I just do the same for each layer. Select, load selection, twirl mask two. Okay, edit, stroke, and there's the same color again, same size. And then I go into my final layer and go select, load selection, or three okay edit stroke okay then I want to put a matching border around the whole thing and you kind of want it the same color for everything so I go control a 
And if I click down onto the background layer and do the same again, edit, stroke, and, and there's my finished triptych, all done. Didn't take very long. And it's all at the set size, ready to go for my um, competition. Done and dusted. So next I'll show you the, the next way of doing things. So we'll start from scratch again and I'll get rid of this. Right, this is part two. So just minimize it. Okay, for part two, we're going to make exactly the same triptych, except we're going to do it slightly differently. So again, we go file, new. And actually, because we've already done it before, there it all is, exactly as we did it, 1620 wide, 1080 high, and our black background. Create. Right, and then we're going to go back into our guides, view. New guide layout. And it's exactly the same because we left it like that um, and as you can see we typed in the preset before so there's our preset okay so this time we're going to use frames if you can't find your frame tool here go down to these three dots and click on them uh, with right click and it will come up with a list of other toolbars or you can edit your toolbar um, I think CS6 has frames, but don't quote me on it. Anyway, so we're going to use frames. So there's your frame tool, and what it does is it's a placeholder for a picture, and it automatically masks the picture. So if we go exactly the same as we did before when we made our selection, except this time we'll put a black box there, and again it clicks to the, the guide. So there's frame 1. There's frame two. There's frame three. Right. So we go to frame one. We go and get our photos. We're just going to use the same photos again. And we just click it. And as you'll see, it changes color. The border of it changes color once we put our picture over it. We drop our picture and it's automatically there and masked. If we want to change the size, you have to make sure you click on this part here, not the frame part. So where you would normally have your mask, you click on that bit and make sure there's a white square around it. And then you have to go Edit, Free Transform. And you can see that it has tried to size it to that frame. So if you decided, oh, actually, no, I want it to be a little bit bigger. Um, you know, I want to move this this way or this this way, whatever. You can do that. And then you just click the tick and it's set. So we'll carry on doing that. Um, so twirl two, we just drop it in there. It changes color. Bang. And then twirl three, we drop it in there, it changes color, bang. So there's all three all sorted. Then if we want to put a frame around it, it's slightly different to how we did it for um, the previous one. What we have to do is we have to go onto the frame and make sure the white box is now around the frame part. Now, I have my properties panel here, but if you don't, go into Windows, go into Properties, click the tick, and it will come up as a box here. So if I click the tick, it'll come up like that. All I've done is taken my properties and gone up and put it in with my history and actions. So I need to make a frame around there. 
So if I do it the same as last time, we did it four pixels. It's um, you can type in there. You can go here, but it's got this funny slider, and it's really hard to to get exactly the size you want. So I'm just go in there and type the number, then click on that, and you just use the eyedropper. Now there's a whole lot of color swatches you can choose from, and then there's a whole lot more down here. So if we just click white, we've got four pixels white. And that's it. You don't have to click a tick or OK or anything. Just that's it. Make sure this is inside. So we do the same here. Make sure the white box is on here. Go up here. We type in our four. We click on that. Click the white. And it's done. Click on the frame again. Change this to four. Click on that, click on the white, and it's all done. Then we go down to the background, we go edit, um, no we don't, sorry, no we don't, we go click on the background, we go control A to select all, then we go edit, stroke, the four pixels, the white's already there. Okay. Last thing we do is we can just clear the guides and there, control D, deselects everything. And there's our photo. All done, very simple. The, um, the only thing I can see with the, uh, using the frame method is if you wanted to have something coming out of the frame a bit. Um, I've seen some photos where they've, they've had like a bird and the beak's gone out into the next photo or they've had a, a person in their hand or, or something's gone over into the next photo. You wouldn't be able to do that with frames, whereas you would be able to do that with the first method. But that is the simplest way of doing your triptychs. Now the only problem you get is you end up with three long thin photos and you may not want to do that. So the next thing I'm going to show you is how to do this using the photos that you want to use of the size you want to use. So we're going to stop here and then restart. Okay, hopefully this isn't going too fast for everyone. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to do a triptych where we start with our photos and work out the size of the, of the background that we need. So I'm going to use the re these three photos here. And so what I need to do is I need to find out the size of them first. So if I right click, I go down to properties. And if I just bring that up to the centre so we can see it. Go to details, come down and you can see the width is 1465 and the height is 220. So let's assume that all three photos are the same height and width. Then I need to calculate how wide my, my um, document's going to be. So it's obviously going to be three times the width plus the margins plus the two gutters. So to do that, I get out my handy dandy calculator and we go one, four, six, seven, which is the width. And we go times three, right? And then we need to add our four gutters, our two gutters and two margins, so four, so it's four lots of 50 pixels, which is what we used last time, and four fives are 200, so we add 200, so plus 200 gives us 4601. So that is our width of the document we're going to create. Our height is fairly easy. It will be 2200 plus the two gutters 
of 50 pixels, which is another 100. So it would be 2300 high. Okay, so let's get rid of that. Minimize that for now. So we start back up here. File, new. We go over to our width. And we remember we calculated that. So that was 5601. And then our height, we calculated 2300. We're going to have a resolution of um, 300. We'll do 16 bit. We've got a black background. We're going to color manage to that and create. And there's our background. So we go back in here. We're going to put our grid lines in. We go view, new guide layout. Now remember we created our triptych preset with our gutters of 50 and our margins of 50 and our three columns, all exactly the same size. So if we've calculated correctly, that's all we need to do. So we just click OK. You don't need to enter in any numbers. It automatically works it out for us. So um, if we're just going to use the frame tool again. And put in our frames. Frame 1. Three. Right. And then we go get our pictures. Picture one. Picture two. Picture three. Done. And then, of course, you'd carry on and you'd do your borders and you'd do your border around the outside. Um, I don't know if you want me to carry on and do all that. Let's clear out the guidelines so we can see. Clear the guides. There's our three pictures. There, all done. Now, if we're sending this into the competition, this is going to be the wrong size. So, what we need to do is resize it. To resize it, we go up to image, image size. Now, the competition sizing, 1620. Make sure that this button is clicked and it will automatically change the height so that it stays in scale. The document height, must you must check that it doesn't go over 1080 which it shouldn't do because these um, triptychs tend to be long. Now, if you were making your triptych the other way around with rows instead of columns, then you would type in the height and check the width. Okay, so we've got all that set. It's automatically going to rescale it, and we go like that, and bang. There it is. We can go control zero and it brings it up full size and there is our triptych nice and easy and you can do that for any size photos and it will automatically set out the um, the distances so that's triptych number three done okay now we start on something a bit more difficult we're going to do a template where we have three different sized photos. So we do we start sort of a similar sort of thing. We go in here and we're going to use these three photos. So we're going to have a landscape and two portraits. So first of all, again, we've got to go in and find the sizes. So again, you can right click properties, details, and there's your dimensions. 
Now, before I started with these three photos, I resized them and cropped them so that they're all the same height. So they're all 2,200 2, pixels high. Um, to get your photos looking good for a triptych, you might have to do things like color match um, to get them looking as a set. You might need to crop them to get them looking um, similar sizes. You want them to look like a uniform set, like they're made to go together. Um, so that means that you might need to crop them or you might need to resize them. And I have cropped a couple of these so they sort of fit in the same sort of dimension. So they look uniform as a set. I'm not going to have three photos of different sizes and then when I try to put them together, I end up cropping them where I don't want them cropped. So starting with the height. So we know the height of our... Um, Final image and this time we're going to go with a 60 um, pixel margin I don't know why I've decided to change it but I just have and I've put all these numbers and calculations in the notes so be sure to download the notes so you can get the calculations so the width of this is 380 so I need to go into my calculator and put in 3080 plus. So close that and then I'm going to go in here and find out the width of this one. Properties, details. The width of this one is 51571. So I see plus to 9. 1571 plus. And then close that and then go into my final photo. I'm going to assume that it's the same size, but and it is, and it's 1571. So we go back to here and we go 1571. Then we have to add the two gutters. So at 60 centimeters each, 60 pixels each, so that will be 60 plus 60 is 120. And then we have to add the two margins. So that is another 120. And that gives us our final number, which is 6462, which I have written down. Yay. Okay, so let's close all this. So we have our figures, so we know the size document we're going to do. And we know the sizes of all the different images we're going to use. So we go up here, we go File, we go New. So we go into Width, and we've just calculated we need 6462 is our width. Our height is that 22 plus the 120. So 2320. Resolution 300. I did it 16 bit. It's black, and I'm going to color manage it by working there. Yes, RGB. Okay, so we're all ready to go. Create. And there's our board, our canvas. Now, we're going to, up until now, we've done three equal columns. Now we're going to have to make three unequal columns. So to get the three unequal size columns, what we need to do is make the columns one at a time. So we start with the central column. So go into view, new guide layout. And we decided that we're gonna change the gutters to 60 and the margins to 60. That's in our calculation, so we must make sure we change that. Right, we are going to only just do one column and the width of that column is three, O, eight, O. And there's our column. We go, make sure you unclick that because uh, when we come back in, we don't want to clear what we've just done. So we go, okay. Right. So then we need to make, next we're going to make this box. So we go, V, 
view, new guide layout, one column, and this time we're going to not center it, so it's, it's going to automatically go to the left. And we're going to change that, and that is now going to become the size of the first photo, which is 1571. So there's your 1571, there's your 60 margin, there's your 60 gutter. And click OK. So now we've got to figure out how to do this one. Because it automatically goes to the left, what we've got to do is we've got to add this number, uh, add this number, the gutter, this number, and the gutter, and then it will make the columns. Right, so view, new guide layout. So our new one is going to be the 151 plus the 380. So 1571 plus the getter of 60 plus the 3080 plus the second getter of 60 equals 4771. So we type that number in there, 4771. And then you see a line appear, leaving you that little gutter. And that should now be our 1571, the same as that. OK. So there's your guide layout. Right? So we're going to carry on and put in our frames. Right, go and get our pictures. So we're going to start with that picture. Then we're going to start with that picture. I don't know why it does that. Did that before. And then we're going to... Um, Put in our third picture. So for some reason, I did the, tried this before and it, it did the same thing. It resized my photo. So remember what I said, make sure you click and the whites around the outside there. Go edit, free transform and pull it out. And flip the tick. And there we go. So we go into view, we clear our guides, and then we put our frame around each one. I think we'll just do a nice light blue. And we go that one. Nice light blue. And then we go this one. Four. Same light blue. And then we go down to the background. Control A to select all. Edit. Stroke. Four pixels. Ah. Now here's where we have the problem because we don't know what colour blue that was. Or is it like that? Okay. Okay. Right. So, Control D to deselect. So there's our our nice triptych, and again, it's the wrong size. So we need to go up to image, image size. One six two zero. Oh. Hit OK. If we go control zero, it brings it back to full screen. 
and there's our finished triptych with our nice blue frames around it. And that's as simple as it gets. I have also included some templates for you and uh, that you can have a go with. You just replace the photos that are already in there and just have fun, play around with it, have a go using the two techniques of either the frames or using the selection and mask, you can um, have fun, create your own triptychs, and I look forward to seeing them next month. Thanks.